Welcome to Phoenix Basics. In this video we're going to discuss the object menu and object properties. As we have seen in a previous video, the object menu can be found here on the toolbar. This shows you a list of all the active objects in your simulation along with important information in the columns. The object menu allows you to add or copy objects. Here I'll add a new object by going new, new object, blockage, and confirming. I can also copy this object by highlighting it and click Object, Copy Object. The Action menu is used to edit existing objects. If I highlight Block 1 and click on Action, I can hide or reveal this object, delete it, modify its colour, set whether it's wireframe, and do some other things here. Open Object dialog box opens the object properties, and here I can change some further things about the objects. We'll go over that shortly. The view menu allows you to change which columns are active in this object menu. If I turn off reference, for example, the reference column will disappear. Um, and group finally allows you to group objects into another group object. Um, selecting this group object will select all of the included blockages or all of the included objects, in this case blockages, and allow you to change settings on the group object and have them propagate throughout the group so you don't have to do the same change multiple times. So I'll just delete that group. The reference column is used to determine the order of the objects and how they are processed in the simulation. By default Phoenix will run through the objects in order one after the other applying changes on top of each other. If you have a fluid and a solid blockage which are intersecting in your simulation, the order will make a difference as to whether that intersection area is fluid or solid. If you have the solid blockage first, followed by the fluid blockage over the top, that intersection area will be fluid. You can change the reference number or order of the objects by right clicking in the reference column for each object and then choosing line up or line down to change the order. If you right click in a different column you will get the action menu uh, rather than changing the reference. The object properties menu appears if you either go action open object dialog or if you double click an object in the menu or if you double click an object within your simulation. There are five tabs to this properties box um, they are common across all object types. You have general, option, size, place and shape. We'll go through each of those now. Here you can change the name of the object. I'll just choose block. And you can also choose the type. And this is quite a long list of objects, um, object types, which we saw earlier when we were adding new objects in new, new objects here. So there are quite a lot of types here, but for now we're just going to focus on blockages. So export allows you to export your geometry um, and save that as a .dat file. Um, if you have a complex geometry which you've created within Phoenix, this can sometimes be helpful. Um, hierarchy allows you to make components out of assemblies. Um, this is more advanced, so we won't cover that in this series. Uh, and attributes gives you all of the simulation properties which you'll need for each object you're using. The options tab gives you mainly view options. Um, I can set the transparency of my object, I can hide it completely, change it to be wireframe, set whether it affects the grid or change its colour. So here I'll just choose red. I can also access rotation options which is also available via the place tab. The size tab allows you to change the object size in X, Y and Z. Here I'll just change X to 0.5, you can see that's grown. Uh, I can also set Y to 2 end, um, that will set it to the maximum value in the Y direction. It can be useful under some situations, um, I'll take that off and set that back to 0.1. The place tab allows you to change the position of the object. Here this will move the object by its corner. I can change that to Y 0.5 and Z 0.5. And then if I want to center it in the X direction, I can change 
to center and select X 0.5. When you have that set to center, you can also adjust the size about the center rather than about the corner. So here if I choose 0.25, that will adjust about the object center. Uh, you can also change rotation options. Here if I rotate in Y, um, 20 degrees, see that's tilted about that low XYZ corner. If I go into rotation options, I can change where I want that to have rotated about. Uh, you can set your own XYZ coordinate center, or in this case, I'm going to use the object center. Uh, and clicking OK there has readjusted that rotation. Finally, we have the shape tab. Uh, the default geometry for a blockage is a cube. Um, I can change this by clicking on cube and navigating to public shapes. And that will automatically be under D settle D object. Um, here I'll just choose a cylinder, uh, but this list here is all of the Phoenix principal objects which can be used uh, to construct a wide variety of simulations without the need for a separate CAD package. I'll set all of these as default for now. So here you can see we have our cylinder, um, but perhaps that's facing in the wrong direction. Uh, you can change this by place rotation options, or as we saw previously, by object rotation options. This is the same menu. Um, and here, rotate object face. So the previous rotation was rotating the object itself as a whole, and now I can rotate the geometry within that object. So by clicking on these up and down arrows here, you can change the location, sorry, the rotation of the object. Okay, I'll just square up the view. Um, the shape tab also gives you the option to use the Phoenix Shape Maker utility, uh, which allows you to parameterize certain shapes that have already been built. Um, so you could create a pipe with a specific wall thickness or you could also import your own CAD file. Um, when importing an STL file or 3DS is preferable, but Phoenix can handle other formats. Um, finally, you can also add a texture to your object. Um, this isn't commonly used, but Phoenix has av available some textures which might be useful. So if I just choose brick, uh, you can see that's deselect the object, you can see that's applied it to the object. Um, I'll just turn that off for now. Recenter. Okay, so in summary we have looked at the object menu uh, as a list of the active objects in the simulation. We've seen what information is available in that menu as well as the options for creating, adding and editing objects. We've also looked at the object properties box, as well as the tabs available for changing size, place, shape, and view properties. Um, and we are yet to cover the attributes for each object. This will change depending on the object type. So we'll be covering this in a future video as we look at some common object types. Thank you for watching. Please check the description for links to our tutorials, FAQs, forum, social media, and CHAMS website and subscribe for more videos coming soon.